Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm DC. Okay, so today I just I just wanted to have a look at the dietary guidelines. Yeah, you know, I came across a few things that people I, th I think should know, but um, yeah, who really owns these dietary guidelines? You know, we we tend to think of them as uh, you know, the, the government brought these out to better improve the, the health of the population. But since the original inception of the dietary guidelines back in the late 70s, um, which has recently been proved, if you know anything about Gary Fetke and his wife Belinda, the work that they did in revealing this is amazing. But basically, these dietary guidelines just went to the highest bidder on, in the food corporation, the food industry. Um, but have a look at uh, this, just a, just a small clip from an interview from uh, Kelly Means. Now he is um, a, an insider who worked for a big food corp corporation, he used to work for Coca-Cola and uh, other corporations and he, has been on a mission to tell people just exactly what they do to uh, keep this going. Uh, New study pushing the plant-based food agenda claims that a 50% reduction in meat and milk consumption by 2050 will reduce greenhouse gases by 31%. The study from the University of Vermont further argues, quote, plant-based meats are not just a novel food product, but a critical opportunity for achieving food security and climate goals while also achieving health and biodiversity objectives. But it turns out one of the contributors behind that study is none other than lab meat producer Impossible Foods, as you know, owned by Bill Gates and other celebrities. Our next guest says this is just another industry-funded scam. Yeah, again, so owned, okay, the company is funding these things, uh, you know, owned by people like Bill Gates and other celebrities, all right? It, these so-called do-gooders out there telling you that, oh, you should do this and do that. Again, you know, who the hell are these people that tell you how to eat for your health, right? Joining me now is Callie Means, former Coca-Cola consultant and the co-founder of True Med. So, Callie, that's interesting. The study that says we shouldn't eat animal-based diets and have meat um, funded by people who sell fake meat. Should I believe that? <laughs> Rachel, when are we going to stop falling for this? Yeah. Uh, let's just back up here. Uh, the, this fake meat is genetically modified pea protein smothered in glyphosate and other neurotoxins that are banned in every other country in the world, and, and also for good measure mixed with inflammatory canola oil. Humans, on the other hand, have been eating meat since the dawn of humans. Exactly. Uh, and actually, amazingly, Rachel, there, there were more, as many cows uh, and, and elk and bison in the United States 200 years ago than there was today. That, that number's been flat, but yet we're being told that the reason for our environmental and health uh, disasters that we're facing right now is because of meat. And yeah, th this is the playbook. Uh, you have the NIH, as we've talked about, saying that Cheerios um, are healthier than organic quinoa. Okay, so there's a number of things to unpack just there. For example, the uh, the oils. Okay, so like our bodies are designed to absorb fats. Okay, we have five organs all ready to absorb fats, the, the biggest being the liver, obviously, and I've talked about this before, but they replaced, of course, they used the same line, you know, that animal fats are bad for you because the people producing all these uh, oils that were actually originally uh, machine oils and biofuels, okay, um, they just wanted to sell it to us to eat as a as a food additive and it's like i did in the last video they, these oils are in all processed foods they are you some of the most widely used food additives around the world uh, and you can see the problems that they've caused so our body will absorb those things but they you know obviously they are not the, the type of things that we should be eating uh, but then again, when they're talking about protein, they talk about protein as a whole, okay? It's like crude pr 
protein. We are uh, we don't absorb crude protein. Okay, any protein is okay, sort of thing, as long as it's protein. That's ridiculous. Okay, it has to be the right currency as well. So we absorb amino acids. Uh, amino acids make up proteins, um, and they need to be in the right amount, the the right uh, currency for our body to absorb and to use. Uh, this is why we we cannot live on uh, vegetable proteins for a start. But then you talk about the way they are growing as well, and uh, this is something um, you know, Evil Food Supply touched on with the McDonald's thing with the potatoes. Okay, that potatoes that go into the French fries, they are actually sprayed with so many chemicals. That's not funny. Um, so, like right from the start, that there's so many chemicals sprayed on these vegetable crops that they actually, like the farmers, cannot go outside into the fields for days after they've sprayed, for example. And then the foods can't be uh, processed and or is considered edible for another six weeks after it's been sprayed. Now, I recently spoke to an organic macadamia farmer as well. Uh, like one of the the most poisonous crops that you can buy uh blueberries for example now these uh corporate farms they're not allowed to uh have a, a blueberry farm near a water supply or water uh waterway that has uh wildlife uh, nor are they allowed to have it anywhere near a um feedlot because it, it will kill the animals it'll kill the cattle when they remove their crop, that soil is so chemically dense that they can't use it for a minimum of seven years afterwards. That's how many chemicals get sprayed on these things. Okay. Actually uh, healthy and nutritious. And you recently had a group of conflicted Harvard doctors uh, bashing a leading scientific journal for questioning ultra processed food. Rachel, this is all an effort that I saw firsthand by the food industry to convince us that ultra processed food, which is much more profitable than natural food, is healthy. And it's a bizarre world because the opposite is true. We're getting sick and the environment's being destroyed because of our farming process, uh, processes that, that, that give us ultra processed food. Okay, so he just said that like conflicted scientists who bash these studies, that, you know, telling, that, telling us that uh, ultra processed food is unhealthy, okay, because they, they work for these corporations, okay, and it's the same scientists that uh, put together these dietary guidelines. And I'm going to show you a couple of articles here. This is from the NIH website themselves, okay, so uh, conflicts of interest for members of the US 2020 Dietary Guidelines Advisory Committee. Now, I won't go through the whole lot, but we'll just have a look at the results, okay? So our analysis found that 95% of the committee members had conflicts of interest with food and or pharmaceutical industries, and that particular actors, including Kellogg's, Abbott, Kraft, Mead Johnson, General Mills, Danon, and International Life Sciences, had connections with multiple members, research funding and membership of the advisory or executive board jointly accounted for more than 60% of the total number of conflict of interest documented. That's incredible. Okay, so basically actually was, what it worked out was 17 out of, this, out of 19 people on, on the committee. Okay, there are actually 19 of these uh, doctors and advisors on the committee and 17 of them had conflicts of interest with these companies all right all right so now i'm going to show you a couple of articles that i found in australia recently too because um it's just as bad look this is worldwide okay um i came across an article is this is from the abc in australia and it's talking about malnutrition in aged care and the dietary advice given by these dietitians. And I just want to show you this because yeah, you know, the dietary guidelines are basically the, the basis for um, education and uh, many other uses, including hospital care, uh, aged care, and all sorts of other things that 
including the fitness industry as well. So this is what it's all based on. So really, they really do have a very long reach, okay, in everything that we do for our, uh, when it comes to nutrition. All right, okay, so this is an article came from uh, the ABC, and it's talking about malnutrition, a serious problem in older Australians, screening needed in aged care, dietitians say, okay. Now, it goes through the article, and it does talk, like, it does touch on uh, real problems that are happening in aged care. Um, and I think malnutrition is a big problem in the Western countries because they are overfed and and malnourished because of the fact they're just not getting nutrients from the food that they eat okay there's a whole ultra processed standard western diet um but they're talking about okay hair falling out weakness and confusion uh wounds that don't heal these can all be signs someone is malnourished but they are commonly mistaken uh, for the normal process of aging Recently, uh, many doctors have come to the conclusion that neurological diseases such as uh, dementia and um, Parkinson's and so on are basically diabetes type 3 and 4, okay, because it all comes from, you know, what sugar does to the brain, um, high elevated blood glucose levels, things like that. Um, so keep that in mind when we go through this article. It says here, in fact, 68% of people living in aged care are malnourished or at risk of malnutrition. And up to one in two elderly Australians in the community may have an insufficient diet. Okay, so a direct quote. Uh, Regrettably, you can die from malnutrition in Australia. I think a lot of people are slowly dying of malnutrition. Like I said, they are overfed on ultra processed foods and not getting any nutrients um but people can definitely fade away professor porter says now this is a diet dietitian and professor so you you would think they would have uh their eye on the ball here but let's see um can it arise lots of appetite or reduced interest in food can happen for a variety of reasons um some physical some uh, psychological Older people carry a large burden of chronic diseases. Now, I, again, um, this obviously they generally put this down to aging, but I think it's it's more to do with the diet. Obviously, the the ultra processed Western diet. Um, but can people alter their appetite, such as uh, kidney and liver disease and congestive heart failure? Uh, People living with dementia can forget to eat, uh, go shopping, or just forget the food they once enjoyed. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's a number of problems with aged care, especially, you know, um, like dentures, for example, not having their teeth and other things, but um, there could be psychological problems as well. There's, I mean, it does touch on a, lo- a number of things here that are all true. But the problem I have with this article is what they suggest. Now, changes to the diet meal and meal times can help. Okay, so early recognition is the name of the game. Don't wait to seek help, as once muscle is lost, it can really be hard to put back on. So, muscle wastage, um, atrophy. Uh, is a big problem in aged care as they just move less and less. So if you're starting to see mobility changes and changes in weight for eating patterns, uh, I wouldn't hesitate to get a referral for a dietitian. But there are simple diet changes that can be made right away. The emphasis for older people needs to be on eating foods that are high in protein and energy, which means vegetables, Take a bit of a back seat. Wow, that's really good. That you would think uh, she's on the right track here. Uh, high protein diet. Um, now, especially as you get older, the processes of uh, absorbing 
a dietary protein into muscle protein is less efficient. So as you get older, you need to actually increase your protein intake. I've spoken about that before. Okay, so it's, you think it's going really well. She's saying, you know, put the vegetables on the back and I don't eat some, eat more protein. So this is good. Yeah. All right. So let's get down to the advice. So don't skip dessert. Have the ice cream. This is their solution to adding more protein to the diet. Have the ice cream. Unbelievable. Okay. So, um, but how do you eat more when you don't feel like it? Okay, a technique called eating by the clock can help establish a routine. Or um, if your appetite is decreased and you need mental prompts to eat, um, it involves eating six small meals at the same time each day, even when you are not hungry. Okay, so this is a dietitian telling someone We'll get to the ice cream in a minute, but this is a, a dietitian telling someone to eat six times a day. So what is that going to do to your blood glucose levels? Okay, it's going to keep it high all day long, okay? So even when you're not hungry. Nutritional supplement drinks between meals are better than just tea or coffee, but food should always be the first option. Okay, so at least... She's saying like food should be the first option, okay? But dietary supplement drinks, okay, I've been through that before, protein, you know, up and go sort of drinks that, you know, like these malt drinks and things that people buy uh, that they say are high in protein, also full of sugar and seed oils, okay? So what's going to be worse for your health, you know? Family members should try not to make mealtimes stressful by putting uh, lots of pressure on someone to eat. Yet she's just telling people to eat six times a day. So let's have a look at her options, okay? For protein, she's got red meat, fish, and chicken. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, if, the, if the following is a plant-based diet, seeds, legumes, and nuts, okay? Let, Seeds, legumes, and nuts. Okay, these are not a source of protein for a human for a human being. Okay, they do not one. They don't have the uh, amino acids that we need to absorb, and two, they are uh, non-soluble fibers that just destroy your body, cause inflammation, and will absolutely just wreck an older patient. And of course. Being plant-based, they are also sugars, okay? They are non-soluble sugars, basically. So what's that going to do for their mental health as well? Uh, and eggs are another option. So, I mean, yeah, the meat, eggs, great. Uh, any, anyone suggesting that the older patients should or anyone, anyone should be eating seeds, legumes, and nuts just has no clue what they're talking about. But now we've got four energy now, again, we don't thrive on calories. We thrive on nutrients, all right? Full cream dairy products such as milk, okay, good. If you can get uh, raw dairy milk, yeah, great. Yogurt, custard, and ice cream and cheese. Okay, so yogurt, uh, they're talking about like the ultra-processed sugary yogurt with seed oils again custard the same and ice cream which is you know predominantly seed oils and sugar these days uh, this is what someone is a dietitian a professor so called uh, recommending for aged care uh, in australia now okay so now i'm going to show you a, a pdf file from uh, queensland health and what this was also uh, the, the, the dietary guidelines used in hospital care uh, for Queensland was revised in 2020. So I'm going to show you some of this revision. Now, I, was, I spent most of my time in hospitals before this. So I can tell you uh, beforehand it was, it was all carbs and uh, very little uh, protein. That, and it's not a real healthy protein either. None of the food that they give you in hospital is is fit for consumption. Uh, even while going through chemotherapy, they're feeding you nothing but sugar and seed oils. Okay, 
uh, which only exacerbates the problem. Uh, or they're feeding you the same problem that actually put you there, really. Okay, so just show you, this is Queensland Health Nutrition Standards for Meals and Menus Revised 2022. Okay. So on this, let's go into the aged care because that's what we we're just talking about. That was down on. Okay, so uh, residential care, including aged care and mental health. Okay, let's have a look at breakfast first. Okay, this is their uh, revised version of breakfast. Cold cereal, low fiber, and cold cereal, high fiber. Okay, so they give you points for each one of these, and uh, uh, they've got one to two servings per day. Um, and let's see, today's choice, puffed rice, okay, cornflakes, and that's your so-called low-fiber version of breakfast, okay, and the high-fiber is muesli, uh, wheat flake biscuit, sultana, and bran flakes. Um, these are just ultra-processed chemical cereals that are, uh, I mean, this is, this is all Kellogg's, all right? Again, you know, who owns the dietary guidelines? Okay, like Kellogg's and all these other, pretty much every other cereal brand in Australia is owned by a sanitarium, which is owned by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which pays absolutely zero taxes um, and yet is government subsidized because these, uh, these guidelines are put in place to prop up these companies and, Basically, our healthcare systems, aged care, hospitals, and schools, and every other government office is fed by these foods, which means it's you know paid for by the taxpayer. Okay. Um, let's go into hot cereal, porridge. Okay, so you've got again, yeah, you know, the the growing of the crops for these, you know, absolutely smothered in these chemicals to you know, before they are actually processed into these cereals as well. Uh, porridge is one of the most chemically rich, poisonous foods that you can actually eat. Um, and then even without the the uh, genetically modified crop, you're looking at a very high starchy carb that again. For aged care and mental health is just going to drive blood sugar up and you know cause things like dementia and other things um okay protein okay their protein source coal is yogurt banana smoothie and uh, bircher muesli okay so the only thing that might have any bit of protein that or usable protein for like amino acid for a human there would be yogurt but again these yogurts would be full of sugar and seed oils okay so honestly the, these guidelines are, like i said these guidelines are influencing so much of our life our healthcare and um education and they are poisoning us okay they are literally poisoning us they are i mean they're Causing the problem that actually put people in the in the healthcare in the first place, or the feeding the problem. Uh, hot protein. Let's have a look at that. Three days per week. Okay, just three days per week for hot protein, and their source of uh, hot protein is baked beans and tomato. Seriously, baked beans. Okay, for one, it's very low in protein. Two. It's a crude protein that doesn't have the amino acids that a person can actually digest. And three, it's very high in fiber and just going to obviously expand and cause inflammation and other problems. Um, now, that's obviously these are also tinned, okay, baked beans, all right? It's just tinned food, all right? Again, ultra processed foods. Um, also on the menu is scrambled egg. Okay, maybe not too bad, depending on what they put in it, of course. And, you know, a lot of these scrambled eggs are actually from made from powdered eggs as well. So cheese omelette, again, you know, maybe not too bad, again, depending on this, what's actually in it. Um, 
chipolatas and poached egg okay so a poached egg probably being the healthiest one there but again this is just three days a week for aged care all right unbelievable uh, okay next uh, they've got snack time because they eat six times a day which is just insane why they need to eat six times a day is beyond me um, but according to this dietitian anyway bread rolls okay bread a roll or toast okay so uh, which is all bread right they've got only three categories bread roll or toast which is still all bread uh, the low fiber being white bread and of course the high fiber being the whole meal or whole grain which is just more insoluble uh, sugar fibers all right and let's go down to fresh fruit okay once a day fresh fruit um a banana banana apple or fruit in season okay the next option is tin fruit okay high in again very high in sugar um tin fruit or portion controlled juice okay that fruit juice has as much sugar in it as coca-cola okay high fructose um you know content orange juice or peaches yeah so there is a choice there orange juice apple juice prune juice uh peaches prunes diced two fruits okay that's tin fruit and last on the list is milk okay full or low fat non-dairy okay the milk they offer is non-dairy so on cereal or in a drink okay so they got full or two percent non-dairy milk fortified soy milk that's okay this is a huge problem like full fat two percent fat um calcium and b12 fortified soy milk okay so soy milk is the the seed oil okay it's really the biggest problem there but they fortify it with a manufactured form of b12 and calcium okay why not just have real milk okay now this diet is not going to help aged care especially with mental health uh, mental health problems such as uh, Al alzheimer's or dementia this is going to kill them right this is absolutely poison this diet now that's just an example all right okay so let's have a look at uh, the pediatrics minimum choice all right so do we talk about children okay it's so a breakfast a cold cereal low fiber and high fiber choices uh twice a day servings per day okay uh depending on age so it's like one to three years old two servings uh, right up to 14 to 18 years old all two servings a day cold cereal twice a day um okay and their choice today's choice okay puffed rice wheat flake biscuit all right so the choices are uh over the week would be puffed rice or cornflakes wheat flake biscuits sultana and bran flakes again the same as the aged care highly processed owned by uh, the sanitarium group of course um now the hot choice again is porridge so they're basically uh, the pediatrics have been treated the same exactly the same as aged care again another you know chemical warfare against these children um cold protein let's get into that okay vanilla yogurt is a choice chocolate milk banana smoothie this is a hospital care for children giving them a choice for a protein source is vanilla yogurt chocolate milk and banana smoothies how is this healthcare? how they have absolutely no clue what protein is this is full of sugar and seed oils this is absolutely disgraceful okay let's have a look at the hot protein source 
okay again we've got baked beans and hash browns okay again vegetable sources of proteins for a start not to not to mention that it's highly processed full of seed oils and other things scrambled egg and cheese omelet is another option okay that may be obviously the the healthier choice depending on what they make that from but i've seen the scrambled eggs it's made from powdered scrambled eggs because it's ultra processed stuff okay and i've been in the hospital system for a very long time i know what it's like it is absolutely disgusting food okay next on the menu is again three separate things we've got bread toast and roll like it like they're separate things it's all bread right it's all sugar again once a day um now they've got oh, they do have an option of fruit toast hmm wow let's add some more sugar into the sugar okay fresh fruit once a day and of course they have a choice between a banana an apple and a mandarin tin fruit and fruit juice okay so they've got uh, peaches diced two fruits orange juice and apple juice okay so you know fruit juices again they have just as much sugar in them as coca-cola does okay now this is just an example what's on their menu okay absolutely disgusting stuff okay um yeah this is just absolutely hor horrifying all right, so let's go up to uh, acute care. Okay, acute care minimum choice. All right, let's start with breakfast again. We've got uh, cold cereal, okay, low fiber, high fiber, okay. Again, it's exactly the same, it hasn't changed. Okay, we've got puffed rice, corn flakes, uh, muesli, wheat biscuits, sultana bran flakes, and then we go down to the hot cereal porridge. Okay, um, again, just it, it just beggars belief, honestly. Like these people call themselves dietitians, and uh, this is this is how far the, the dietary guidelines go because it's the it's the dietitians are educated or uh, on the dietary guidelines basically the dietetics association of australia america and the uk it, they are all founded not just owned but founded by um the kellogg's and you know, sanitarium group okay that actually have your cereals they actually make these things these corporations trying to push us all plant-based and so on ultra process based all right again um so let's have a look at the the cold protein again we're looking at yogurt banana smoothie okay a yogurt like a processed yogurt full of seed oils and sugar or a banana smoothie that's their source of cold protein again just unbelievable just beggars belief that people actually uh, use this stuff okay high protein all right this is the high now it's got uh per day zero zero okay is recommended at least okay, it's a per cycle so depending on how long they're in the hospital say so like for a week maybe you know a few times a week baked beans hash brown scrambled egg cheese and bacon omelette chipolatas baked beans poached egg tomato pancakes and syrup okay so i don't even know what protein they're even trying to get out of protein out of pancakes and syrup but whatever um again bread low fiber high fiber that you can eat more of than the protein source unbelievable um and again the fruit you know they get fresh fruit once a day and banana or apple and tin fruit or juice okay so this is the kind of care you get in a hospital system 
Queensland Health Nutritional Standards for Meals and Menus Revised 2022. Wow. Okay, guys, so I'm, I'm just going to leave that there today. Um, there's more we could talk about this, and yeah, maybe we will in the future. Um, there are Dietary Guidelines Committee in Australia now revising the Australian Dietary Guidelines, um, but that won't come out until uh, 2026, I think it is. Um, but in the meantime, you know, hundreds of more people every day in Australia are uh, being diagnosed with diabetes, for example, and other chronic diseases because of our diet. And then when they go to the healthcare, like go to the hospital, they just get fed, fed the same the same poison, okay. Um, so, you know, these guidelines were created and uh, by food corporation, big food industry. Uh, the original ones back in the seventies, and the, and nothing has changed today. Uh, this is uh, being pushed by our education system, um, and a lot of these corporations actually created these. Uh, nutritional sciences such as uh, the Dietetics Association in America which then spread all Western countries is all owned or well, created by the Kellogg's and uh, sanitarium group okay uh, which of course wants you on a plant-based diet for ideological reasons um, but also profitable reasons you know ultra processed slop poison is is very cheap to produce and you know, can also uh, sell you other products at the at the back end as well, such as pharmaceuticals. So, you know, these um, big food and pharmaceutical corporations, of course, they want these guidelines to push what push their products. Okay, so you got people like Gates and uh, other investors, including these so-called celebrities that people all love so much. But the thing is. No one's coming to save you, all right? This is a grassroots movement to restore your health. If you want to live a better, healthier life, you need to take control of your diet, of your uh, health care, okay? All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there, and uh, we'll talk about this again soon. Um, let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and, you know, try and get this information out there. It really helps. You know, if you, if you want to see more content on my channel, uh, you know, it's, it takes resources and I can't do it by myself. So I really need your help to get this message out there if you can. All right, guys. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Uh, I really appreciate you all tagging along with my story and, uh, I hope that uh, the information that I give you uh, can help in some way. So, all right, take care.